All right, I'm going to finish this off. Not because it's not great. This was a great... I'm glad I kept this all these years. As a historic... See, you think, oh, magazine. Like, you know, oh, yeah, what kind of weirdo are you? What are you, a boomer? Yes, I am. I am, a bo- I am now a boomer. Thank you. Uh, but in terms of the photography and the stuff that's written, the, the history that's in this stuff, you know, and even the stuff I'm into, the films, the models, magazines, the toy soldiers, the comics, whatever... Uh, they are visual snapshots in time, okay? Uh, in many ways, even this, a time that is, it's gone. It, it slipped, it disappeared right under your nose, didn't it? If you know what I'm saying, okay? Uh, I mean, while, while the, the uh, bougie horror mags try to tell you otherwise, it, it, has, it has disappeared. It has gone away in the night, okay? And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's how it should be. But regardless... I just want to finish this off. They have, of course, a British magazine. So they have one on the British brands. Not really much to say other than, yeah, Venom. You know, Venom was, Venom is a black metal. They invented black metal. So, okay. Oh, they don't, no, they invented, no, they invented all of extreme metal, but black metal, okay. Bands that listened to Venom became black metal bands, trying to be like them with even less skills. And they, and they, like I said, they inadvertently created your thrash metal, okay, and then became your death metal. Okay, that's, the progression. If you don't agree with me, you're a zoomer with a poodle haircut. All right. So, is it not a lot of UK bands? Of course, Cradle of Filth, the hot topic. But man, that first the demo and the first album they did. That was he. He had. I, I listen. I kind of like the shrieky, almost feminine kind of vocals. Uh, I don't mind that as much as I don't like the music. Uh, in turn, I don't like the generic music, and I don't like the super. Everything is keyboards and whatever, but it has a place, okay. And that first album and that first EP were pretty, pretty good, pretty good. So, um, and of course, the whole idea: why does UK not have a united scene? What's well, very different than Europe? Right? Well, of course, England, Britain uh, has no shortage of melancholia. Uh, I mean, it has a history tied directly with Scandinavia in many ways, but even older to the Romans. There's a lot of supernatural. There's a lot of atmosphere there. Uh, and, you know, as you can see, there also are people that have been used and abused to, 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 to kill their cousins, and now they're being eaten up by the same force. But in terms of the music, you know, I like them. There's, this one, there's a band here, man. These guys, dude. Access of Perdition. I, I, I recommend them. They, they right. Access Perdition from Middlesbrough, okay. Uh, who's interested in decaying structures, right? A lot of their aesthetics are not the woods, right? Like Cradle of Filth. Their aesthetics are like the grimy, urban, you know, post industrial decay, right? And, uh, right. Uh, the, uh, whose interest in decaying structures and urban survival horror surely influenced their cold, almost ambient tinged works, right? And they mentioned, they, they even use samples, I think, from the Silent Hill video game. So, man, this is a band to check out if you have it. Um, and they go, of course, oh, the, the other, this band, I've heard of this band. They're kind of like, uh, I think they're, are they from Wales? I don't remember. Uh, oh, no, look, controversy, right wing sympathies. It's friggin' black metal, you limey. I can't say it. It's black metal. You're supposed to, at, at the very least, be right one. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? So, but anyway, yeah, you can see this. Uh, this band was cool. Extinction. I only there's only one thing they think they did, but they were pretty interesting. But like I said, black metal in general. I mean, Britain's metal heritage. I mean, f- with grind, the whole earache thing, uh, God flesh, all that stuff. I mean, there's enough in there. But you know, in terms of black metal. Yeah, you know, there's still, they still have, uh, like I said, this band, man. This, this is an amazing band. So they mentioned other ones here. Uh, it's funny too. One of the biggest, uh, I guess, uh, at the time, right? London's the most outspoken supporters of the UK BM is from was from an Italian guy. Well, hey, man, a lot. Hey, a lot of Italians went to London, man. You already had by the turn of the last century. You had Cockney Italians, right? I have distant, distant cousins, apparently, from my dad's side of the family, that didn't go to America. They went to London and Liverpool. So, uh, you can imagine. Uh, we're all, we're all, the English sphere, we're all in the fort now, though, aren't we? Yeah. 
Of course, of course, the uh, Diddy cover the mainstream. Of course, when the, uh, the I mean, I like early Dimmu Borgir, but you know, it's like whatever. But and of course, I never, I never heard. I know this guy Wei Tan. Why I can't pronounce. I know this supposed to be a big deal, but you know, there's only so many bands you can listen to, right? I like this though. I like he pisses on the mainstream and and the underground, right? Uh, and he makes a good point here. The genius of black metal lies within its unbound, chaotic essence, untamed artistry, and wild and evil creative thinking. Right, so they're thinking outside the box. Okay, unless you're putting, uh, I mean, you could put trip hop beats in. I'm saying, unless you're putting guys rapping, right, or country, or like country singers or pop singers in your black metal, there's nothing you can't do. Right, and then they go to the opposite. Of course, the the U.S. black metal scene. Uh, they mentioned Grand Belial's key. Oh, it's controversial. Well, you know why, right? <laughs> but they don't mention Pro Fanatical. They don't mention Paul Ledney. They don't mention Havohe. Okay, that's that was that was a weird. Um, that was a very weird omission uh, because they were huge. I mean, I I never heard of Absu. No offense. Everyone knew Pro Fanatical and Havohe. Back in the early New York days, they had a link to the New York death metal scene too. But you know, and of course the latest stuff, you know, Zatter, right, Leviathan, the one man stuff, uh, Knock Misty. You know, I never heard them either. I know, yeah. You know. And they don't mention a band here. That's interesting, right? There's a band here they don't mention. Uh, they mention them here when it comes to the the post black metal. They meant these guys. These guys are amazing. Okay. Wolves in, Wolves in the Throne Room are not post black metal. Uh, they're not. I thought maybe they were a hipster band until I heard uh, Celestial Lineage. Uh, these are black. These guys are black metal as hell, dude. They, they may look like whatever this dude, but it's all right. It doesn't matter how you look. Right? It, Wolves in the Throne Room is freaking black metal. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, Jap oh, Japanese always represent Japanese. You know, remember that uh, Thai? There was a, a one from Taiwan. I forgot what they were called. You know, and they talk about the future. Of course, I think they they talk about the uh, the uh, what is it? Right, it, it, uh, there's always going to be a link with black metal, also. And you have what is that? That black gaze. I don't know anything about it. But they're always going to mention. You know, the idea that, that you, when it comes to the sound, you have, right, you have, like, the Cocktail Twins, the early Cocktail Twins. So he's in a band, she, all these old new romantic bands with the guitar, the Cure. The way that they would distort the guitars and bend the notes is almost, like, side by side with how black metal is, you know. Some of what, and Varg, of course, uh, came out. He came out of the closet as a Cure fan. <laughs> so, and if you listen to the first... Uh, uh, Napalm Death demo, you know, when it was Nick, uh, Justin, and Mick, uh, you, you could hear there's a real strong Joy Division kind of uh, sound in there as well, which also sounds like Bird Song. You get what I'm saying? There's a link to this stuff. It's not all to divide up. And, uh, and what is it? Oh, these are, of course, they're calling with the, the, the East, the Eastern European uh, bands. Oh, Grave Land. Oh, how dare you show them? Uh, and they mentioned, of course, uh, not. No, uh, Behemoth, right? Behemoth. Are they a black metal band? When I saw them, they were metal as hell. They were awesome. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, hey, who are you? Yeah, yeah. So, look at that. What a punchable. F ah, I'm just kidding. That, I love the tell is great. Uh, this is what he mentioned, like the pagan black metal, right? Right. Blood of Kingu. Yeah. So it was interesting looking at him. But of course, all the nationalists, all this nationalism, all oh, these people are proud. These people are evil because. They're proud of their ancestors. They're proud of the struggles they their ancestors have been through. You know, they want their men to be strong. They want their women to be feminine and and to be supporting and to have children. They want to fight people that want to take that away. They don't want to be invaded and replaced. And what horrible people! You know, and of course. Uh, Golgoth. Now Golgoth, I mean, Gal, Gal is the coolest, uh, him and Rob are the coolest gay guys in metal, and I'll be frank, because I mean, Gal beat the shit out of a bunch of people too, but uh, I, I still, when I hear, the, I still think the early Golgoth is better, with the old singer, it just sounds more crazy, but whatever, it's cool, you know, uh, 
and the French stuff. The French is a whole thing. I mean, you know, mutilation sounds great if you listen to the old stuff, but they're very, I like how the French, right? The French are very, um, you know, oh, there's, there's Nazis. Would you stop, please? Would you stop? Uh, but I like how the French, you know, even they always have to be different. And I like how they they also defend prejudice against the French black metal scene has always existed, and the reasons might be due to an assimilation with our own culture, which for many people only deals with beauty, aesthetics, romanticism, and so on. That was a horrible French accent. There was also a lack of credibility in our music, especially the one being violent and aggressive. Mm. Yeah, gall power. Yep. Right, so, but, the, you know, you gotta cover France. Of course, they don't cover Italian, but uh, the Italian black metal, the, the ones I've heard, they tend to be, the Italian black metal tends to be more like the old black metal. I know they have that band, Bulldozer was a big band. Uh, what was the other one? Was it Death SS? It was almost like a theatrical band, but they had, like, really kind of, it sounded like black metal a little bit, if you listen to the, the singer. Uh, but Italy always had like the older school metal type of black metal stuff, you know. Uh, and you also you have a bunch of dudes that are kind of like, let's just say they have the uh, they have certain flags and their things. And they they uh, they sing songs, the odes to the Aditi, uh, to the uh, the black shirts, and to uh, of course the, uh, the the fallen leader, you know, the, how they did him. Mr. Benito Mussolini. Oh, the right wing. Yeah, look up a time. Everything you look up, uh, nationality and black metal. Oh, right wing, fresh. I mean, I mean, f- fuck you. Yeah, there's no more, no more wacky uh, trying to be funny shit. And here's the avant garde. Here's where they talk about the avant garde. Right, the shoegazing. Right. And they mentioned, yeah, remember, remember, Lush. Right, slow dive. My bloody Valentine. Uh Cocktail twins, right? Shoegaze, right? They looked. They were looking at the. Uh, they were looking. At, well, they weren't looking at their sneakers. They were looking at their pedals because they had so many pedal effects with the guitars. You know, everyone forgets a shoot or early shoegazing band. There was a certain band that was one of these bands that then then went on to become one of the biggest band in the nineties, right? Smashing Pumpkins. And you can see how, I mean, like I said, I don't know that black gaze music I've heard of. I don't know anything about it. I never heard anything of it. But I can see where you would get an influence from this. And uh, all over. Uh, you had a few good records, buddy. But you went a little wacky there. But anyway, and that is... Oh, we're going to back up. There's the band. I remember that. Right, the, remember the girl? She plays the uh, the Chinese... Uh, the two string knee violin, the er, I forgot what it's called. So you know you hear it all the time, and of course uh, Taiwanese band. Although the uh, a lot of their stuff was about Formosan uh, uh, mythology, right? The Formosans, who are essentially kind of like I don't know how you say it, they're like the Indians of uh, Taiwan, right? Uh, and uh, you know, the only Chinese you had in Taiwan were Fukien, uh, kind of like settlers, you know, like pioneers, but. Uh, they didn't really uh, get into the interior until the Dutch came. And the Dutch and the Formosans got along well. The uh, the Formosans would hunt reindeer. Uh, there were a lot of reindeer in Taiwan. And they would get, they would trade the pelts with the Dutch, who eventually, after like an eight-month battle against Ming, uh, you know, refugees, because the, the Manchus had taken over, uh, you know, there was a battle. The Dutch held the Chinese off, but they were kind of running out of supplies. Uh, the Formosans were ready to fight. The Fukien Chinese were like, hey, we're Chinese, man. We're going to help the Chinese. So, you know, maybe you guys should leave. And the Dutch did. They signed a treaty with the Ming. They left. The Ming took over. And then, like, just like in the Shaolin movies. But then the Qings took them over. Man. Why did I give you that, that history lesson? I don't know. Oh, you, you know, what kind of black metal? I thought it was supposed to be racist and right wing and this and that. Listen, man. In this world... What are we looking for from black metal? The only thing you want from black metal is you want something that's real and you want something that's a link to the past. And the link to the past and the thing, the essence of all of us that existed, that was the same in your ancestor a thousand years ago, wherever you're from, uh, to now, okay, in this modern world of fucking hell, okay, this is 
This is our way to heaven. Later. What are you looking at?